I would like to say thank you to everybody who watches my videos and a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I'd also like to personally thank every one of my Patreon members for supporting our channel. Also, if anyone is interested in the pocket hole jig or screws that I used for today's test, I will have a link to those in the description. Hello everyone, my name is James, and today I decided to put a little project together to try to test the strength of pocket screws. I have an old tabletop here that's made of a bunch of 2x4s glued together and it used to, uh, used to hold some tools. I've had it for about 10 years without uh, doing anything with it, so I thought I would use this for today's test. I get a lot of messages and emails from people who tell me that pocket screws just simply aren't strong enough and I shouldn't be using them. So I decided to put this test together today to test it out and kind of show everybody what I think about them. And here I'm cutting up some pieces of pressure treated 2x12 that I bought at Home Depot. I do agree with many woodworkers and pocket screws definitely have their place. I do many fine woodworking projects that I would never put a pocket screw in. Uh, some woodworking projects just deserve mortise and tenons or uh, dovetail joinery and things like that. But there are many others, such as cabinet carcasses, which are ideally suited to pocket screw use. There are many items that I have done, such as my lathe tool cabinet, which was a recent build, and I put the entire thing together with pocket screws, and many people were questioning its strength. And I didn't really see the need to spend an extra dozen hours putting it together with mortise and tenons or dado and rabbit when pocket screws are actually phenomenally strong. Well, I'm sure you've figured out what I'm building at this point, and it is going to be a ramp. I'm taking that old 2x4 tabletop and turning this into the two side pieces of the ramp. And the 2x12s that I cross cut on my chop saw are going to be the center sloped portion of the ramp. So I'm making some marks on these about every two inches for pocket hole screws. And so the 2x12s are 14 inches long and so that's going to be the, the width of the ramp uh, that I'm going to try to drive on. I actually have no idea how strong these 2x12s are. I don't have any idea if they'll support the weight of a car. Uh, I don't really know how strong the pocket screws will be either. Uh, however, I suspect they're plenty strong enough to hold this thing together. So two of my daughters are helping me put this thing together. Uh, I am using the Craig uh, pocket hole system and uh, this video is not in any way sponsored by Craig. I'm just a big fan of pocket holes and this was the jig that I happened to buy way back when I started using them. So I know these look a little close together here, uh, maybe every couple inches. Uh, when I do cabinets, I put them uh, further, I put them about every four inches apart. But I figure if I drive up on this thing, the contact patch area of my tire is really fairly small. It's not really going to be spread over the length of all three of these 2 by 12 so it's not like I'm going to have 25 or 30 screws supporting the car. I'm actually probably only going to have about four or five on each side, so that's the reason I put them a little closer together. Uh, another thing I'm doing is I'm actually screwing the boards together uh, with Craig screws as well. I think that may give me just a little bit of extra support and I wanted to to show that that's a common feature uh, for the Craig screws is to, to, grew, uh, to screw two boards together end to end like this. I was thinking that if the bulk of the weight of the tire was right towards the edge of one board and the two boards weren't affixed together then that one board might just break. So I thought this would kind of help hold these things together. I wanted to try to get a fair test of this actual joint strength and if the boards broke then I really wouldn't be able to figure out what that was. So you can see these boards are even warped. That's why I kind of clamped them together snugly in order to get the screws in them. Uh, so that's it. Now we're going to set it up on its side. I'll put these pocket screws in uh, and we'll drive them all in. So once again it does look like a lot of pocket screws but just kind of envision the contact patch of the tire. 
and it's going to probably only be spanning maybe four or five screws and I don't really know where I'm going to be able to stop on this board as I'm driving up it so I just want to make sure that I had four or five screws underneath the tire at whatever point I stopped at. So I keep saying contact patch and I just want to explain that. What that is, is that's the actual part of the tire that makes contact with the road surface. It's a pretty small part of the tire and this is why I just wanted to make sure that there would be screws underneath this contact patch area as the tire drove up the ramp. And now i got to put on the other side. I'm not really going to try to make anything perfect or, or measure the height or get it you know, square or level. I'm just going to put it together, clamp it, and screw the other side together. One of the biggest advantages for me is that pocket holes are fast. Uh, this whole project might have 40 or 50 pocket screws in it, and the whole thing was, was drilled, uh, put together, and assembled in maybe 30 minutes. That's really a huge time savings over traditional joinery. So for me, if my project is utilitarian, pocket screws are really the way to go. And so that's it. I've got the thing built and put together, but I realize now that I've, I've made the little triangles longer than what they needed to be. So I'm just going to take a minute, measure, and cut the excess off. Uh, or just mark and cut it off, I suppose, not measure. I didn't actually measure anything for this build. I just took a board, cut it into a rectangle, and cut the diagonals to make the, make the two ramp sides. And now I'm just cutting the excess off. I don't want it up too high in the air in case this ramp breaks. I don't want to hit the underside of my car with it. Uh, so I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. And there we have it. One completed test ramp. And my youngest daughter there is carrying it outside for us. Uh, it's not very heavy. I think the thing probably weighs maybe 30 pounds. So once she sets this on the ground in front of the tire, I realized there's kind of a big bump up there. So I decided to just cut a little triangular board so the car can drive up rather than bump into the ramp and uh, possibly push it out of the way. And the whole time we were building this, we were planning on driving my wife's little Nissan Sentra up onto it, which is a pretty heavy car. I think it weighs maybe 3,000 pounds. Uh, but then I got ambitious uh, towards the end and I decided I'm going to drive my uh, Ford Excursion, uh, which is an 8,800 pound car. And I'm going to go ahead and try to drive the front of the Excursion up where the engine is. This is a V10 gas engine. And so that's actually pretty amazing. Uh, it didn't break. We actually drove up on it three different times in order to capture the best footage for it. And the ramp had no problems holding it. There is nothing holding that together except for pocket screws. There's no wood underneath. It's just strictly a screw joint. And you can see this thing is a big beast. One of the heaviest passenger vehicles on the road. You can even see on the last shot that we took there, I had a camera underneath it, so I was uh, capturing some close-up footage, and I wasn't really worried about the ramp breaking at that point. And there we have it. I think that is a pretty successful test uh, for the strength of pocket screws. And just maybe I'll get a few less emails from people telling me that they aren't strong enough. Thanks for watching.